Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back, guys. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to fix some of the videos I made when I didn't have a microphone. And this the fourth candle that illuminates the 12 tribes. I needed to redo it. So it's kind of like a remake and it's long and we only get through six of the 12 tribes. But stay to the end because it's good. It's really illuminating. So here we go. This is another part of the bar here, Shabbatium. This is chapter 14, and it illuminates the 12 tribes of Yesarel, the fourth candle. Receive now the fourth candle of the bar here, Shabbatium. The fourth candle illuminates the Am Yesarel, which is the nation of Yesarel, the Shini Hugim, the two circles that form one church shall be Am Hidad, one nation. The name of our nation is Yesarel, which means right relationship with Elohim. And those who take refuge in the Lord and the Lady by accepting the Bar Hir Shabbatim have new life as citizens of Yesarel. Yea, there will be many Nasseri and Kwabutsa, but they all form one Nasserian nation. Behold, a time comes when the Kwabutsat will be attacked by the forces of darkness, and Nasarians will be dispersed to live in private homes in the towns and nations of the worldly, lest they be slaughtered one and all. Lo, even in those days, all who accept the bar here, Shabbatium, shall remain one nation living in the world, but not of the world. Their guidance shall come not from the rulers of the world, but from the priesthood of the Lord and Lady. Yea, let the dispersed Nasarians gather in local Quihilots, which are congregations, to receive guidance from the Nazarim. And let all the Quihilots receive guidance from M. Hekel, the Mother Temple. Behold, Abigail, even as you shall found Yesarel, which is the nation of those in right relationship with Elohim, there shall be a multitude of other nations. Yea, you will be greatly outnumbered. And all the multitude of nations outside of Yesarel are united by one thing. They wish to rule in place of Elohim. Yea, they struggle against Elohim when they should serve Elohim. Wherefore, we call those nations Yisrael, which means he would rule as Elohim. For to this world has come Lucifer, the soldier of Satan, and has planted the tree of Yisrael in the soil and life of this world. For due to disobedience to the unwritten law, Adam and Eve fell and became citizens of Yisrael. Due to the Nafal, which is the fall, there was need of raising. Wherefore you shall establish the Nasarian priesthood on this world, for with the fall of Adam and Eve, may vet the way of death entered this world, and wherever there is mavet, there is need of raising, which is resurrection from the way of death unto the way of life. And those of the way of life in the Lord and Lady are the Nasareans, and even in dispersion, we are one nation. Though scattered amongst the towns and nations of the world, lo, when the days of dispersion come and the quizabutsats are no more, continue to meet in hidden congregations. But when conditions are favorable, the Asarel will form quibutsats, which are communes of the Essene way. And all quibutsats are under the guidance of M. Hekal, the mother temple. Behold, Yesarel is one nation united in Mahase Kodesh which is holy work, wherefore all citizens of Yesara perform Mahase Yah, the work of Yah, yea, all are Osim, all are workers. Every member of this nation performs the raising up of oneself and others, for we are Nasareans. Every Nasarean is a healer of the nations, for we live and teach the Essene way, even so we express Mahase Kodesh, in a variety of ways, according to the Ose Tzadik, which is the righteous activity of the 12 tribes of workers. Yea, a Kwabutsat of Yesarel shall be of 
Shinaim Asar Shavet Ha Ovadim, which is 12 tribes of workers. Lo, each tribe is a spoke of the one wheel, that is, the one nation of Yesarel. Therefore, the 12 tribes will not live separately from one another, but will live amongst each other. For behold, a wheel missing many spokes will collapse. Therefore, when conditions permit, the Nasarian nation shall form Quebutsats, and each Quebutasha will strive to enlist members of each tribe. Now behold, the twelve tribes of workers of the one nation of Yesarel. This is verse 40, chapter 14, in the Nazarene Genesis. Let there be Shavet Nazarim. This is the first tribe, number one. The tribe of priests and priestesses. Lo, let the priests consist of circles within circles, for there are many levels of initiation. Let those who feel called to the priesthood first prove their sincerity as members of the congregation. Then, after demonstrating sincerity, let them study to become ministers, for that is the intermediary step between the laity and the priesthood. Yea, ministers are the servants of the congregation, serving in whatever capacity is most needed. Let the Nazarim Elion, the high priest, invite those ministers who serve well to study for the priesthood. Yea, there may be many levels within the priesthood. And each priest and priestess rises according to their progress in Omna and in service rendered through the years. Responsibilities and privileges within the Nazarim expand as one rises through the ranks. Only the Takibula Elion, the Supreme Council, shall know all the names and rankings of the priesthood, for the enemies of Yasaro will desire to know all those names and rankings to use for foul purpose. But behold, the Supreme Council shall consist of the high priest and two members of the priesthood selected by him. You, Abedil, are the first high priest. Your successor may be male or female, for both are equally worthy and may be from any tribe. Behold, each tribe represents a type of work. Some Nazareans will participate in the work of more than one tribe according to their desire. For nobody shall be forced to do one type of work against their will, nor be limited to one type of work. Each tribe is under the guidance of the high priest, and the high priest will select Zaquin or Zequina, an elder or an eldress from each tribe, to assist his guidance of that tribe. And each Zaquin or Zequina must also be a priest or a priestess of the Nazarim. Lo, I say unto all who will enter Shevet Nazarim, your work is important. Your help is acceptable and needed. Be not despondent when the world around you is dark and decadent, for within you is Nazareth, the homeland of the Nazarim. Therefore, O Nazarite, take Nazareth with you wherever you journey. Yea, and when your work seems of little effect, be not despondent, for even one soul raised up to El Kush is cause for jubilation. Yea, be not despondent, but neither should you boast that you are a Nazarite, thinking yourself superior to those of other tribes. For I tell you truly, a Nazarite who boasts lives not in Nazareth, knows not the holy presence, and wears not the crown of righteousness. Rather, bend low that you may be high, for that is the way of Shevet Nazarim. Blessed are they who keep the way of Shevet Nazarim. They are of the nation of Yesarel. They are working for Jaja and shall receive heavenly blessing. Kushab, I say unto all who will enter Yesarel, give thanks. Raise your hands high and give thanks for Shavet Nazarim. Let there be Shavet Raphaim, the tribe of healers. These are those Nazarenes who specialize in the healing arts. Behold, the healer knows the herbs of the field it's good for healing. Yea, for all the ailments of the body there are herbs. In the, in the field and the forest they have been given by Jaja to comfort and heal. Lo, no illness exists that cannot be helped or healed with the appropriate herb, and the healer knows the foods given by Jaja that can prevent many ailments, yea, and they know the foods that can cause many ailments, and they know the uses of water, clay, stone, and sunlight, yea, and of many things given by Jaja for healing, and their hands are skilled in the healing arts, yea, they give comfort even with the touch of their hands. Lo, I say unto all who enter Shabbat Raphaim, your work is important. Your help is accepted and needed. Be not despondent if many refuse 
the Nasserian way of healing and be not despondent when your work seems to fail for some illnesses and injuries must run their course and no remedy will cure. Yea, some illnesses and injuries are even unto death and none may prevent this for the body mankind wears on fallen earth is not that of the first garden of Cush. Therefore, be not despondent when your efforts seem to fail for I tell you truly, the, the love you share with those who are beyond healing gives comfort to their souls and a comforted soul rises higher than a despondent soul in the life to come for love raises the soul of both the giver and the receiver. And when your efforts are successful and you heal the sick, do not glory in your skill for all healing is from Jaja as is every skill and never let worldly gain interfere with your righteous decisions as a healer he who cannot compensate you shall receive the same treatment as he who can for this is the way of shabbat ray fame lest are they who keep the way of shabbat ray fame they are of the nation of yasarel they are working for jaja and shall receive heavenly blessings Kushab, I say unto all who will enter Yesarel, give thanks, raise your hands high, and give thanks for Shavet Raphaim. Okay, the third tribe, we're at verse 102. Um, Let there be Shavet Ari Arayat, the tribe of lions, which is the Nasarian army. Behold, this army wages war without killing, yet this is the Tizavat Hayat the army of life, for they defend life from violence. Though they kill not, they are as brave as lions, for each Nasserian lion shall be trained in Sa-Yen. And Sa-Yen is mastery of the movements of the body and mind. Lo, the only weapon permitted the Nasserian soldier are his philosophy, body, and wooden staff. The staff must not have sharp ends or metal and may be used to disarm others who carry lethal weapons. The primary weapon of the Nasserian lion is his philosophy, which is the bar here, Shiba Theum, with added training in Zayen. The secondary weapon of the Nasserian lion is his body, which is which has been trained in Zayen. The third weapon of the Nasserian lion is the wooden staff that ha he has been trained to use in Zayen. The staff is the weapon of last resort. Philosophical discord is the weapon of first resort. The primary purpose of Shavet Ariyat is to serve Shavet Nazarim and thereby all of Yasarel by accompanying the preachers as they roam the world. They will also defend Nasarian Kwebutsats, though they may kill, may not kill. And Wherever they roam, they will defend the defenseless, but will never kill. Behold, it is better to die than to kill, for the soul of the killer will fall into foul pits in the life to come. Therefore, many Kwebutsats will be destroyed when attacked by heavenly armed combatants. But you are to prefer dispersion over killing. For the soul of a dispersed Nazarene will rise higher in the life to come, provided the Essene way is not abandoned. To kill is to abandon the way. Lo, the bar here Shabbatium is the new covenant given after the fall of this world. Had there been no fall, there would be no need of Shabbat Ariat. Even so, they kill not, preferring death to killing, for death does not prevail over the non-killer. Nasserian lions, be not despondent when you see the armies of darkness appear to win victory after victory. For victory is not always what it seems, yea, and he who seems to be the victor may later be revealed to be the vanquished. For true victory is the expansion of consciousness, not the expansion of worldly possessions. And this victory is won through service rendered in love, Think not that the other tribes perform their work effectively, but you fail in yours, for your success can not be easily measured. Behold, if you let yourself be killed by a spear rather than use the spear to kill another, do you fail? It's a question. I tell you truly, such defeat is the greatest success. Therefore, be not despondent by apparent defeats, but neither should you boast nor use your strength to intimidate others, for such behavior is not the way of Shavet Ariat. 
Blessed are they who keep the way of Shabbat Ariat. They are of the nation of Yasarel. They are working for Jaja and shall receive heavenly blessing. Kushab, I say unto all who will enter Yasarel, give thanks. Raise your hands high and give thanks for Shabbat Ariat. Okay, the fourth tribe, it says, let there be Shabbat Sharim Vadavarim. The tribe of song and words. These are the singers and musicians, and the poets and writers. Behold, great teachings are imparted by music and words, yea, and also great feelings. Truly, joyful music is of heaven. A single note may raise the spirit, may lift the heavy soul. The harmony of voices raised in song gives delight even to the angels, yea. Singers and musicians are givers of joy, provided they make themselves instruments of jaja. Likewise, writers and poets may impart great wisdom and inspire profound feelings as instruments of Jaja. -ja. Yea, great wisdom is shared by tongue and scroll, and great acts are inspired by the artfully uttered word. For behold, in the beginning is the word. Yea, communication is of Jaja, -ja, for it brings light into darkness. O tribe of song and words, be not despondent when it seems that your words fall on deaf ears. Neither be despondent when your joyful music is not rewarded by the world. Do not be despondent and say, the work of other tribes is appreciated while ours is ignored. Know this, a single pluck string creates a ripple that is felt throughout the heavens and a word of wisdom that seems ignored may be in fact stored <laughs> as a seed within the hearer. I love that, that's a rhyme right there. And a word of wisdom that seems ignored may in fact be stored as a seed within the hearer. Be thankful for your gifts of song and word, but do not boast or gloat that you have greater gifts than others, for without the gatherer of materials, you have no parchment or on which to write, and without the skilled craftsman, you have no instrument with which to make music, and without the framer, you have no food upon your table. Behold, words and sounds may enlighten minds and lift souls, but they can also darken minds and torment souls. See to it that your words and sounds are of Jaja, -ja for, for neither boasting nor gloating nor dark words are of Shavet, Sharim, Va, Dava, Rim. Blessed are they who keep the way of sh Shivet, Sharim, Va, Dava, Rim. They are of the nation of Yasara. They are working for Jaja -ja and shall receive heavenly blessings. For Shav, I say unto all who will enter, give thanks, raise your hands high, and give thanks for Shivet, Shirim, Vadavarim. Fifth tribe, let there be Shavet Rikushim, tribe of gatherers of materials. These are the prudent men and women who gather and store materials that will be needed by others. For lo, the tribe shall need wood and stone, seed and soil, and other such things. Shavet Rekushim shall gather and store these materials, but that is not their greatest work, for they must see that the materials taken from the bosom of Mother Earth are taken in a manner that does little harm. Yea, if too much wood is taken from one forest, that forest will become ill. Likewise, if too much stone is taken from one mountain, the beauty of that mountain will be destroyed. Behold, Mother Earth is happy to share her soil, wood, and stones with you, for you are her children and have need of such things, what mother would deny her children the milk of her breast, but likewise what child would cut off the breast of his mother? Wherefore, those of Shivet Rikushim have a sacred charge, gather and store the raw materials of earth, of the earth mother. But in a wise manner, with sensitivity to her health, O Shivet Rikushim, do not become despondent, thinking other work is more spiritual than ours. For I tell you truly, you are the stewards of nature's bounty, and that is a sacred trust. Yea, the spiritual work you do for Jaja -Ja places you in a position of trust. Show yourselves worthy of that trust, for if the steward becomes a thief, who will protect the earth mother? Therefore be warned, let not the temptation to profit from overzealous gathering of raw materials overtake you, for such is not the way of the Shivet Rekushim. Blessed are the gatherers of raw materials who keep the way of Shivet Rekushim.
they are of the nation of Yasaro. They are working for Jaja and shall receive heavenly blessings. Kushab, I say unto all who will enter Yasaro, give thanks, raise your hands high, and give thanks for Shibet Rekushium. All right, here we are, six. The sixth tribe is at verse 194. Let there be Shabet Aikarim, the tribe of farmers. Lo, the farmers sow the seeds that become the fruits and vegetables that feed the tribes. The farmer rises early with the angel of sun and works with all the angels of the earthly mother to grow the crops that feed the hungry. O oh, Abdiel, just as the name of your father is Adam, which means soil, and the name of your mother is Eve, which means life, the farmer seeds dead soil with life to bring joy to the children of earth. For without the blessed work of the farmer, there is sadness and starvation in the land. Yea, the wise farmer works in harmony with Mother Earth and thereby brings joy to the children of earth. But be warned, an unwise farmer can bring death and despair, even as the wise farmer brings life and joy. For whereas the wise farmer mixes the principles of life with dead soil to make living soil, the unwise farmer will mix the poisons of death with living soil to make dead soil. Wherefore I say unto all who hear my voice in the day when poison foods are offered at low price in a fancy wrappings, know that those wrappings are not but the burial wrappings of those who partake. Truly to those of that day I say, better to pay double for living food than to partake of poison food. Yea, poison food is that grown in poison soil and living food is that grown in living soil. Wherefore I say unto those of the future, beware, for when Adam and Eve are in union, there is joy, but Adam without Eve is death and despair. Behold, there are twelve tribes of workers in Yesarel, but those of each tribe should touch the soil. Wherefore, in each Nasseri and Quibutsha, those of each tribe will work in the gardens in the mornings or evenings as needed, according to the view of the garden master. But those of Shevet Aikarim, the tribe of farmers, will specialize in this sacred work. Farmers, do not become despondent, thinking your work mundane and of the earth, but the work of priest transcendental and of the heavens. Nor should you think your fields less beautiful than the products of the artist. And do not think the sounds that surround your work less pleasing than the voices of the singers or the drum beats or the drummers. Lo, each farm is a holy scripture testifying to the ways of Jaja, and he who does not see the tapestry of Jaja in the fields of the farmer is blind to Jaja, and the birds that sing in the skies above the farms are as heavenly chorus of angels, and the rhythm of the rains as they fall upon the fields, and the rhythm of the seasons as they turn. What drummer can surpass these? Yea, do not think your work less than the other work, but neither should you think your work more important than the work of others. Such is not the way of Shabbat Aikarim. Lo, you would be homeless without the house builder and clothesless without the seamstress. Yesarel is one nation, and each tribe of workers contributes to the blessedness of this nation. Blessed are the farmers who keep the way of Shabbat Aikarim. They are of the nation of Yesarel. They are working for Jaja and shall receive heavenly blessings. Hushab, I say unto all who will enter Yesarel, give thanks. Raise your hands high and give thanks for Shevet Aikarim. Right, so that was six of the 12 tribes. And I'm going to end it here and just get this other part up here, the other six. Stay tuned.